Patrick, I'll, I'll start with you. Did you hear anything or see anything from this event that would change your investing thesis around Apple? So if I can wrap up today for Apple, it was a push. I saw some highlights. I saw some lowlights. I think we saw enough today for Apple loyalists to stay in the camp. However, I didn't see anything today that necessarily moves Android, Windows, or even Chromebook uh, users over. Casey, what's your take, particularly on the iPhone, whether they've announced uh, enough with new uh, functionality or, or lower price points to get people to upgrade in the near future? Well, on the plus side, they do now have more prices where, uh, you know, would-be iPhone owners can get into the game. I think you'll be able to get that iPhone 8 for 450 bucks now. So I do expect you're going to see some people kind of co come in on the low end there. At the high end of the market, when you look at the features they've announced, those are really for photography enthusiasts, people who really get into the nitty-gritty detail of taking photos and making videos. And so it's hard to imagine that that's going to reverse the year-over-year -year declines we've been seeing in iPhone sales. Okay, so Patrick, you said that you believe that Apple moved the needle in its own ecosystem, but not with Android and Windows users. When you see Disney and Netflix sell off on news of a $4.99 video streaming service, you think what? Was the price more ambitious than you were anticipating, or is it what you expected? So the price was lower than I expected at $4.99, and I think for those premium iPhone buyers, it's going to be a no-brainer. So I think Apple's going to do well here. Uh, I don't necessarily see them in the same... Uh, market as Netflix. Netflix has a much wider offering. Uh, Apple has a narrow offering, but the only thing Apple has to do for success is to have that show uh, like Hulu with a Handmaid's Tale that you have to watch. Uh, the bigger risk, though, for Apple, I think, with the iPhone uh, to add on is on Pro, where's 5G? Qualcomm talked about 150 uh, I, uh, 5G phones coming out, the majority in China. I think it's going to make a difference in the fourth quarter of this year and the first quarter of next. Mike, the fact that Apple rallied more than 1% into the close here, you know, is this a reflection of the broader market or is this a reflection of the event or both? It, you know, it was, it was kind of vacillating all day. So it wasn't as if the event finished and the, the stock went up or even during the event. So I do think it was somewhat uh, picking up of some of the lesser uh, crowded names like Apple. But in general, I do think it seems like a net positive. Now, the issue with the subscription service, the video subscription service, is interesting because I think you saw the panic run through the competitors because maybe the total addressable market in terms of revenue for this whole class of, of services is not as high as we thought. If we're talking about $5, I mean, think about that. Think of 200 million subscribers. It's a billion dollars a month to Apple. It's $12 billion a year. What are they spending on content? Is that a real bonanza for Apple? Not really, but as a defensive move, as a way to protect the ecosystem, it's worthwhile. And it's a